At this point we're standing looking out over Lake Pamamaru. That's one of the larger lakes in the Menindee Lake system. The lakes all lie adjacent to the Darling River and are classed as overflow lakes, which means that in natural circumstances they only filled when the Darling River are flooded. Um, in about the 1950s there were a number of modifications made to the the lake system and to the river itself in order to control the water flow and enable water to be stored for longer periods. This has caused some of the system to become degraded because some parts now receive too much water while other parts receive too little. Despite these modifications, the lake system is still an extremely important wetland site with exceptionally high biodiversity. The lakes and surrounding wetlands provide valuable habitat for a wide range of fish, reptiles, birds and mammals. The area contains both plant and animal species that are listed as vulnerable and threatened at either a state or national level. This site is also an important area for migratory species. The Federal Government has listed the Menindee Lakes as a wetlands of national significance, but a local group of people are working towards having the site listed as a Ramsar site. Ramsar sites are wetlands of international significance, and under the Ramsar Convention, the Federal Government has obligations to establish a management framework aimed at conserving the wetland and ensuring its wise use. So apart from the greater environmental benefits that flow from listing as a Ramsar site, identifying them as a wetlands of international importance would also be a strong tourist draw card to the area. And this in turn would bring a much needed economic benefits to the local community. I'm Simon Molesworth and I'm a pastoralist in outback far west New South Wales. But I'm also an environmental lawyer, uh, an environmental lawyer that specialises in environmental policies and strategies. One of the issues I've recently been involved in is the Menindee Lake system. The Menindee Lakes is one of Australia's greatest inland lake systems and it has the most extraordinary set of values. It has natural values based on really ancient geology, ancient geomorphology, and an ancient water system, which has attracted all manner of uh, life, uh, bird life, plant life, animal life, fish life. And you combine all those features together, and you've got one of Australia's most special environmental places. Menindee Lakes are also important socially because they are part of the recreational values of the Far West Division of New South Wales. And so not only the town of Menindee, which has a very strong indigenous community, but also the Broken Hill City uh, citizens use Menindee as their playground. So you combine those values and it becomes a challenge to decide how one best manages it. The current proposals are to draw out those environmental values and make a decision on how you can balance those with the other users. And one of the very best ways of doing that is to achieve a community-wide acceptance of those environmental values, that they are, for instance, one of Australia's best wetlands. Now, wetlands are very important because they demonstrate the best of biodiversity this is where life is healthiest because there's an interaction right through the spectrum from the smallest living organism through to the top of the chain, the predators that will, will eat the, the larger animals and birds. And it's important to maintain such diversity. It's also fascinating to understand, to study, to look and to enjoy. And so we believe that if you focus on them in Indy wetlands, and identify their values, for instance, perhaps meeting the international standard of the wetlands of greatest significance through what's called the Ramsar Convention. It's an international agreement between nations to protect special wetlands. 
then you can tell the world at large, not only Australians but the visitors to our country, that here we have a very special place. Come and visit it. And if and that, that happens, and they don't have to only be the scientists wanting to study the birds, the, the water, the geology, but they are the, the tourists that bring dollars to the community and lift the whole economic <coughs> <coughs> sorry, the whole economic base of uh, that community, uh, thereby providing a vibrant future for those that live and visit that part of New South Wales.